All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for checking the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover today. So do me a favor before we get into these topics. If you end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here with some significant announcements that were made yesterday during Sony's CES 2023 conference. The first being Project Leonardo, reading from PlayStation Universe. During Sony's CES 2023 presentation, we got our first look at Project Leonardo, what Sony calls a highly customizable accessibility controller kit for PS5. A PlayStation blog post that went live shortly after its reveal goes into greater detail than Jim Ryan did in his time on stage at CES 2023, but the high-level takeaway is that this is potentially Sony's first massive hardware leap forward for making its games truly accessible to all players. Accessibility is an important topic to us at PlayStation. Senior Vice President Hideki Nishino begins in the blog post. We want to continue raising the bar to enable every gamer to experience the joy of play. According to Nishino, Leonardo is built to address common challenges faced by many players with limited motor control, including difficulty holding a controller for long periods, accurately pressing small clusters of buttons or triggers, or positioning thumbs and fingers optimally on a standard controller. Project Leonardo can be used in conjunction with a second Leonardo controller or a DualSense controller and is extremely customizable so that players can create the controller that is perfectly suitable to their needs. For now, the controller is still currently in development, says Nishino, and that Sony continues to gather valuable feedback from the community. So this isn't a product that you can buy yet, but this is, you know, Sony coming out and letting everybody know that it's something they're working on. And you have to assume they're getting closer to the finalized product here. But, you know, you look at all of the accessibility settings that PlayStation Studios includes in their games. You know, they've been winning awards for going what is truly above and beyond to just, you know, go all out with the accessibility settings. I think it makes complete sense for them to now do the same thing from a hardware level. Uh, from the software perspective, Sony's been doing an amazing job with accessibility and to see them now jumping into the hardware side of things makes complete sense and I think this is great. So let me know your thoughts on that. Next up, we have some news regarding Gran Turismo. One of the things that Sony announced during their CES conference is that Gran Turismo 7 is going to launch with PlayStation VR 2 and it will be a free upgrade to anybody who already purchased GT7 and also picks up PlayStation VR 2. And I think that this is a great announcement to a lot of people. This is huge to a lot of people. This means the difference between maybe passing on PSVR 2 for now and immediately picking it up. I saw quite a few people for months saying that, you know, where's the GT7 PSVR 2 reveal? It feels like this is just something that needs to happen and you know it did come a little bit late here but you know it's awesome to see that gt7 is going to be playable on psvr2 i have to admit even as somebody who's not necessarily gran turismo player this is quite appealing to me so let me know if you know you're somebody who plays gt7 if this is going to be your reason to buying into playstation vr2 but on top of that we got our first look at the upcoming gran turismo movie and I have to admit that there was a bigger presence at CES with this movie than I was expecting. Now, we didn't get our first trailer, but we got, you know, a couple clips of what the movie's going to look like. You know, David Harbour and Orlando Bloom are talking about it. And you can kind of tell that Sony's putting a lot into this. And I have to admit, when I first heard about a Gran Turismo movie, I kind of just shrugged and was like, uh, okay, I guess. But after, like, hearing them talk about it and how... It's based on a true story, and they're really going above and beyond to try to make this a great movie. I'm sold, you know, based off of what I saw so far and what I heard, I got to say that I'm actually looking forward to this Gran Turismo movie, and it's it's interesting. You know, I, I would have never thought that this is something we would be talking about, but here we are. So, yeah, let me know if you're interested in the Gran Turismo movie. Next up, we have a couple of big topics talking about... The Last of Us. First and foremost, we got a new uh, piece of concept art for the upcoming ambitious Last of Us multiplayer game. And Naughty Dog did let us know that they are going to be talking more about this game 
throughout 2023. They have more information that they're going to be giving us. I would assume a full blown reveal is coming. And, you know, this art looks really good. This is the second piece of concept art. We're getting something else that I want to talk about that is really important is that when they talked about this multiplayer game, they made it clear that this is going to be a fresh new experience from the studio, but one that is, quote, rooted in Naughty Dog's passion for delivering incredible stories, characters, and gameplay, end quote. So it's pretty clear that a big part of The Last of Us multiplayer game is going to be the cooperative aspect and, you know, storytelling new characters. These are going to be components of this multiplayer game. It's not just going to be like a PvP game of some kind. So I figured this was worth mentioning because I think a lot of people were wondering, you know, if that's going to be a part of this upcoming Last of Us multiplayer game. It absolutely is. Now, the other thing that Naughty Dog revealed is that the Last of Us series has now shipped or sold more than 37 million units to date. So obviously a juggernaut franchise here. But on top of that, they did tease that they're going to have some surprises for us throughout 2023, making it clear that we can expect some things from them um, that will, you know, hopefully get people excited. So in general, you know, Naughty Dog just wanted to, I guess, kind of set the stage for what we can expect in 2023. And for me personally, out of everything that Naughty Dog may be doing this year, this Last of Us multiplayer game is the thing that's really on my radar. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be very interesting. But we also have Neil Druckmann seemingly teasing a part three for The Last of Us, which is interesting because we just covered how he was telling people not to really buy into the insider rumors or reports. And the latest insider report we got was, you know, somebody saying that they're working on The Last of Us part three. So, you know, I kind of assumed that's what he was referring to. I guess not, because according to Neil Druckmann, he thinks there's more story to tell when it comes to The Last of Us. So this was done uh, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. And when speaking about the possibility of the third game, that's literally all he said. He just said, I think there's more story to tell. Now, he doesn't really go any further than that. He doesn't explicitly say like, yeah, we're working on a part three. But, um, you know, it, it is worth noting that they might not be working on The Last of Us Part 3. They could be working on something brand new, a new IP, and The Last of Us Part 3 is something that's going to come after that. But yeah, you know, this is Neil Druckmann making it clear that they are not done with The Last of Us, which, you know, I guess, all things considered, isn't that surprising. But something else I want to cover that I think you guys might want to pay attention to, especially if you're somebody who is looking forward to the upcoming Last of Us HBO series, apparently Season 2 of this show is going to cover part two of The Last of Us, which maybe doesn't sound that surprising on the surface, but I do think that quite a few people were thinking that if they do a season two or three of this Last of Us HBO series, they might go in a different direction. Reading from PlayStation Lifestyle, it says the first season of The Last of Us HBO series is due to begin later this month, but creator Neil Druckmann and showrunner Craig Mazin are already discussing the possibility of a second season. In the first season, uh, if it proves to be popular enough, the duo hinted that season two would cover the entirety of The Last of Us Part One. The Last of Us is set to run for several seasons. The first season will cover the entirety of the first game, although there will be some radical changes that will make things mix things up to surprise viewers. Both Druckmann and Mason hinted in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter that season two will then cover the entirety of season two. So, or uh, part two, I mean. So I have to say this definitely drops my excitement for the HBO show. I love The Last of Us 1 and it's one of my favorite games of all time. I love Joel and Ellie's story. I did not like The Last of Us Part 2 and you know that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about this HBO series is they're covering the you know the events of the first game. I guess it you know does make sense that if they get a second season they're going to cover the events of the second game. Something I'm going to be paying attention to is how they change it up like they're saying here they're going to make radical changes depending on what they change up uh for you know season one and covering the first game could give us an idea of things they might be willing to change up if they cover the second game in season two so yeah you know uh this could just be something where maybe i just watch 
season one and just leave it at that but uh figured i would let you guys know about that and one final topic regarding the last of us that i want to cover before we move on here is how apparently season one of this hbo series cost up to 100 million dollars this is significantly higher than most of the things that hbo has done again from playstation lifestyle the first season of the last of us hbo series has reportedly cost the television network upwards of $100 million, according to The New Yorker. That's an incredible amount of money and investment for a debut season. By comparison, that's almost double the budget of the first season of Game of Thrones. So yeah, this is like $10 million per episode. There's no doubt here that HBO and Sony and Naughty Dog are anticipating this is gonna be a big hit and a big success. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, what happens if this thing really does kind of become that big and that important i guess you could say to hbo and, and sony so there you go 100 million dollar budget uh they're not playing around here we're moving on here though and we're talking about jim ryan and how apparently he was named among the 500 most influential global media business leaders reading from playstation universe Variety has name dropped Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, as one of the top 500 most influential business leaders shaping the global media industry. The Sony executive also made an appearance in the same list for 2020 and 2021, and his recent credits uh, include completing the acquisition of Bungie. Quote, the company has continued to make strategic investments, acquiring 14% of From Software and injecting $1 billion in Epic Games, and has also objected to the Activision Blizzard deal, which the FTC is now attempting to block. PS5 is still outselling the Xbox Series consoles nearly 2 to 1, but Xbox's domain over subscriptions prompted Sony to overhaul PS Plus in June, offering a greater library of titles to gamers. So that's just kind of a summary of, you know, some of the bigger things that Sony did throughout 2022. Uh, you know, basically highlighting why Jim Ryan made this list. So pretty cool. Now, the final topic we're covering, in my opinion, is the most significant when it comes to PlayStation in 2023 and going forward, because Sony has officially announced that the PS5 shortage is over. And on top of that, they're letting us know just how well the PS5 is doing currently. So this is reading from PlayStation Lifestyle where it says now that the PS5 has sold through over 30 million units worldwide, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan believes that the PS5 stock shortage has ended. Quote, everyone who wants a PS5 should have a much easier time finding one at retailers globally starting from this point forward. End quote. This is exactly what Jim Ryan said during Sony's CES 2023 presentation. Ryan said that Sony dealt with unprecedented demand amid global challenges over the past two years, thanking fans for being patient as players scrambled to secure a console. December 2022 was apparently PS5's biggest month in terms of sales, but Sony still has quite a long way to go to meet its own sales target. But that's the thing here. It's one thing when we hear analysts kind of speculating that the shortage is coming to an end. It's one thing when we see the PS5 coming out on top, you know, a couple months in a row and we look at that data and assume that the shortage has finally come to an end. But it's another thing entirely, in my opinion, when Sony themselves has finally come out and announced to everybody, especially at the beginning of 2023, that, hey, guys, you know, we're able to produce enough PS5s now. Anybody who wants one is going to have an easier time getting one and there should be no problems. To me, this is great news because as somebody who has been covering the ps5 uh, even leading up to its launch i can tell you that this has been a really bizarre and in some ways rough start to a new console generation it's one that is very abnormal one that has hit many roadblocks that were you know not necessarily sony's fault not anybody's fault but just unexpected things that happened and so I can't help but kind of get this feeling now that Sony has made this announcement that 2023 is really going to be the year, as silly as it sounds, where this generation finally gets off to a proper start. People are going to be able to buy PS5s. Sony's going to feel more confident about letting people know what's in the pipeline for the PS5 so they can go out and buy them and Sony doesn't have to worry about you know, overhyping people and not being able to sell them a console. That's kind of a big deal. Now we're going to see more PS5 only exclusives after basically getting 
I don't want to say only cross-gen games because that's not true, but mostly cross-gen games the past two years, especially with some of Sony's bigger titles. All of that is, you know, finally coming to an end. And as, you know, a PlayStation enthusiast, as a PS5 player, I am very excited about that. It tells me that things are really about to ramp up in a big way. And also, PS5 reaching 30 million units sold, I would, I'm going to say, everything that Sony has encountered since the launch of the PS5, I'd say that's a pretty incredible feat. And I think it's only going to really ramp up further and, uh, you know, continue to sell even faster going forward. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Leave it a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.